Previously on Time Cop. Jack the Ripper was never caught. I just became him. What's the plan then? Catch the Snow Ripper. I want my pocket watch. Don't you mean your temporal controller? Our temporal intruder's name is Ian Pasco. He's only 13 years old. You're telling me Logan's fighting a teenager? He's fighting the adult Pasco. Pasco's from the future, my guess, at least 20 years. I know everything. Why are you stalking Rita? Well, who better to murder her than the greatest killer in history? God, I love show business. <laughs> Much better. Step off the bed. You boys really should get cable. Seven days, two hours, and 19 minutes ago, I've paced this cell 5,327 times. I've gone through three inhalers, 21 hydrated meals, and I've spent every spare moment staring up at this omnipotent eye. We need to finish your psychiatric evaluation. Oh, I forgot. No small talk with the psychopath. Maintain your distance. You wouldn't want to humanize your subject. Makes you wonder, who's the shrink and who's the serial killer? Why do you do it, Mr. Pasco? Why are you compelled to alter history? How could I possibly explain the rush of standing over the body of someone like Jack the Ripper to a man who's never been out of his own time zone? Just call me crazy, Doc. You'll sleep better in blissful ignorance. I understand you received a letter this week. <sighs> the true nature of your visit revealed. And who sent it to you? The last time I checked, Doc. Uh, in this country, we had something called the Fifth Amendment. I know that one inside and out, Doc. I was the one who whispered it into Thomas Jefferson's ear. As you can see, it's been edited for my own protection. May I look at it? Well, it seems someone's reaching out to you. It's gibberish, you idiot. Why is everyone always looking for hidden meanings? When all they have to do is just look at the text. Help me! Somebody help me! Let me out of here! Somebody help me!
just got the code red. Now tell me it's not true. Pasco escaped from temporal detention at 725 this evening. Sorry, Logan. He was supposed to be on 24-7 security watch. What did he do? Just click his heels and disappear? All right, cool your jets. Seems someone sent Pasco a letter. The ink was treated with concentrated ammonium nitrate. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz, and some smoke screen. He used the diversion to overpower a guard. Why wasn't his mail monitored? It was, but for content only. Who knew? I mean, most people use a ballpoint to write a letter, not the anarchist cookbook. He still had to get past the fingerprint scanners. Let's just say he borrowed one of the guard's thumbs. Federal marshals are already scouring D.C. and the surrounding vicinities. Well, they better find Mr. Houdini before he gets to a rogue sled. We can't exactly do a hard target search through every decade, century, and millennium. Pasco's not going anywhere without his temporal controller. Logan, don't start with your mind of the killer theories. That right? watch is Pasco's passport to the future. He's gonna want it back. Really? Well, that's too bad. That's too bad because his precious little watch is sitting in a titanium vault <laughs> built into a concrete bunker 100 feet below street level. Now, tell me, Logan, how's he gonna get in there? Nuke it? Trust me, I'll find a way. Logan, library, now. You've let Pasco get to you, Logan. He wanted me to catch him in 1956. That's the only way he could travel back here and get his watch. I suppose biting off that guard's thumb was just part of his grand scheme? He just did what he needed to do to bypass security. I'm telling you, he's got a plan. Don't put him on a pedestal. He's just another temporal sleaze. This bag. one's different. No, you just think he is. Jack, you're the best I got. But I can't afford to have this guy do a shake and bake with your head. I need to know if you're with me. I'm gonna catch him, Mac. Good. Yeah. Hi. Uh, you guys finished with your little heart to heart? You got a problem, Easter? Oh, no, 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 no. I was just wondering if this was a library or a timeshare. Everybody's so itchy. The folks at Temporal Detention just modeled over a copy of Pasco's poison pen letter. Push F2. This must be the original uncensored version. I've studied rap lyrics to make more sense. Let's give Pasco the benefit of the doubt and say it is gibberish. What do you make of that? Watermark, most likely. Let's highlight it. Rest Washington, D.C. Quality since 1751. 1750. Now that's weird. Now D.C. wasn't chartered until 1800. What do they do? Set up shop in the swamp? That's not a watermark. That's an address. It's Hemmings. That's where Pasco's headed. Tell Matuzak I'll warn Claire. Call Hemmings. Hi, it's Claire. Leave me a message and I'll call you back. Thanks. Those things. Pasco. Hello, Claire. Claire, is that any way to greet an old friend? Did you know since the invention of the car alarm, both noise pollution and auto theft have risen over 800 percent? I thought you'd be halfway to a rogue sled by now. Oh, you've got to be kidding. You have any idea about the safety records on those things? I'd be better off driving a Pinto. What do you want, Pasco? Well, I thought. Since we carpooled together, that you'd be kind enough to invite me in. I'm not taking you into the TEC. Oh, yes, you are. We're gonna walk in there just like two old chums who haven't seen each other in 50 years. They'll shoot you before we get to the front door. Well, if they shoot me, which I don't think they will, they're gonna have to shoot us, because we're a team now. Can't reach her at home and her cellular's dead. Scramble a SWAT team now. I think you can tell the SWAT boys to stay home. 
The Grinch is already in Whoville. Let it go, Pasco. Officer Logan, so good of you to join us. You know why I'm here, Jack. You want your pocket watch? Yes. Give it to me, and I promise I'll stay out of your lifetime forever. Who's helping you, Pasco? Who sent that letter? Oh, come on, Jack. Even a 13-year-old could figure that out. I'm Captain Eugene Matuzak. If you got anything to say, you direct it to me. Gene, such a pleasure. Uh, why don't you be a good bureaucrat and clear this room of all non-essential personnel? I'm sorry. Did I forget to say please? Next time I hit something with a pulse. Clear the room. Your watch isn't here. Well, I pray you haven't damaged it. It's kept in a vault which can't be accessed without permission from the Senate Oversight Committee. It could take days. Even then, there's no guarantee. Oh, well, then we have a serious problem here because time is of the essence. Don't give in to him. Oh, Claire, martyrdom isn't only overrated, it's extremely painful. You know, I, I've seen your future. Two adorable little boys. You do want to have them, don't you? You hurt her, and I guarantee you'll never make it back home. Jack, you do realize that you only caught me because I wanted to be caught. Never forget. I'm from the future, and I'll always be one step ahead of you. Still gonna take time to get your watch. <laughs> Good. Claire and I will be... We'll be taking a little trip to Chicago. 1928, Chicago. There's no way in hell you're going back in time. Oh, yes, we are. And you're going to launch us, Jack. Set the coordinates for June 14, 1928. Uh, we'll be waiting for you. Under the clock, Union Station, midnight. If you don't come alone, she dies. If you send us anywhere else, she dies. Jack, if you forget to bring my watch, our huggable little Claire here will die. We're playing by Chicago rules now, Jack. You're never getting that watch back. Well, if I don't... Be buried in the Roaring Twenties! Claire, I understand the meal on this flight is fantastic. Will you be having beef or chicken? Is it done? Yes, Mr. Capone. Two in the eyes, two in the throat, and two in the heart. Opportunity, Eddie. That's how you should look upon Joey's unfortunate demise. Joey took advantage of my graciousness. Yes, Mr. Capone. I provide for everyone who comes to sit at my table. I only ask for one thing in return. And you know what that one thing is, Eddie? Hi, Al. I'm back. Did you miss me? Like a tumor. Don't get fresh. Remember how you got the first scar. Get the lady some clothes, lapdog. I'm fine as I am. No, you are not. This is the era of dame skirts and broads, and you are damn well gonna blend in. Why'd you come back? Let's just say I'm in town with a few hours to kill. Minute to launch and counting. Got downloaded the sublimator. Chicago in the 20s makes Sodom and Gomorrah look like a Norman Rockwell painting. And to wake the subcommittee chairman at 3 a.m. to get this. I'll tell you what he told me. Don't screw up the next time he's sleeping in. This is the only way. 30 seconds to launch. I prefer if you left Pasco at the bottom of Lake Michigan in a pair of cement shoes. Hey, a guy can dream. What? Cheer up, Al. I won't be here long. And as soon as I'm gone, you can go back to being the Godfather. But right now, 
You work for me. I'm used to being given a certain amount of respect in my own home. Well, the way I see it, you wouldn't have a home if it wasn't for me. I'm the one who introduced you to bootlegging, gambling, and all the other nefarious activities that you claim credit for. I still had to put together the operations. I took the risks. Risks? Yeah. I'm the one that kept you one step ahead of the law. And all your enemies, you've dodged so many bullets, it's embarrassing. I can hold my own in a gunfight. Don't get cocky, Al. You know, I could have plucked any Goomba bouncer off the street and they'd be standing right where you are now. But I chose you, Al. And because of me, you're going to go down in history. Now you blend, Claire. Shouldn't we be headed to Union Station? Well, I have a few matters to take care of first, but uh, Mr. Capone here has uh, graciously offered to escort you. Oh, Alphonse, don't be late. You know what I always say. A tardy man is a dead man. Loving memory of Sammy Trigger Happy Bianco. Guess someone got a little trigger happy with you, Sammy. Thanks for the suit. Taxi! We got a future criminal back in 1928, and we're hardly picking up a rip. Yeah, I've seen mud puddles with bigger under toes. What's your analysis? Well, either your little dome's blown a fuse, or Pasco's been to 1928 before. I hate it when you confirm my worst fear. You got a line on Pasco's anonymous pen pal? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you'll love this one. He sent the letter to himself. Easter. Get some sleep, huh? Pasco told Logan a 13-year-old could figure out who sent that letter. Great, get one in here. Oh, you're missing the point. Pasco is from the future, but in 2007... He's only 13 years old and on the lam for killing his foster parents. I contacted Pasco's lawyer. He told me that letter was delivered to his office by a kid. You're telling me the 13-year-old Pasco broke his future self out of prison? The brat was his get-out-of-jail-free card. Can I uh, help you, mister? That's all right. I'm meeting someone. Oh, I get it. You're one of those. One of what? Well, there's only two types that walk in here. Lovers and leavers. The lovers kiss each other goodbye as they're boarding the Chicago Limited. The leavers end up kissing the wrong end of a tummy gun. Thanks. I'll watch my back. You're not meeting somebody under the clock, are you? Oh, well, uh, in that case, I think it's time for my coffee break. Uh, is there something I should know? This is Chicago, my friend. It's a sucker setup. Union Pacific announces morning for train fifty-nine. City of New Orleans, track number twenty-six. Departing at two a.m. for Champaign, Urbana, Charlottesville. Hurry. Got to catch.
Catch a train? Where's Hemmings? She's right where I told you she'd be. I trust you brought my pocket watch. Let's make a deal. Jack, have your porter meet Officer Hemmings and Mr. Capone in the middle. Capone? That's one of the perks of having home court advantage. But you're from the future. I'm from anywhere I want to be, Jack. Treasury boys kept bankers' hours. Not when you do your best work at night. Kidnapping women, that's a new low, even for you. It's not one cop, it's another. Everybody down! I guess we're destined to meet again, Jack. Move it, Tits. Move it! Find me! Not all you rats are jumping ship. You stay right where you are, buddy. Here's the deal. You don't shave, you don't get to point the gun. I'm Treasury Agent Elliot Ness. And I get to point the gun at whoever I want. I don't work for Al Capone. Sure you don't, Dapper Dan. You just use the same tailor. If it wasn't for me, you and that badge you're so fond of waving would be splattered all over the station. I don't owe you anything. I had a clean bust until you messed it up. How long have you been doing this? Two weeks. We scoured the whole area. We couldn't find any shell casings. What do you mean there are no casings? It was a shotgun. Look harder. Yes, sir, Mr. Ness. That blast didn't come from a shotgun. Clamp it. It was probably filled with dimes and tacks. Check around the baseboards. Three pass, go get a laser blaster. I didn't mean for it to turn out this way. Oh, hey, forget about it. Hey, come on. It's not every day I get to tell my grandkids I was within spitting distance of Al Capone. <laughs> oh. Here's your watch back. It must be some fancy sundial. It's definitely one of a kind. <laughs> Did I say that you could move? Look, Ness, let's get something straight. I do not work for Al Capone. I don't even know him. I'm after the guy who took a shot at you. Why don't we just help each other out? I don't need your help. Really? Bert, what's the word on the street about Elliot Ness? Kid pencil pusher who thinks he's a big shot. Federal guy sent him out here to annoy Capone. The funny thing is the cops hate him even worse than the crooks do. I even hear they're tossing coins about who knocks him off first. <laughs> Give the man five bucks. What, for insulting me? No, for telling you the truth. So, Bert, where can a couple of new boys get a quick lay of the land? Plenty spats. Guy who shines shoes here in the station. He knows what's going on. Keeps his ear to the ground. Nobody can spit without him hearing about it. Give him another five. Oh, you're killing me. <sighs> Brilliant, Al. I ask you for one small favor and you screw that up. What can I tell you? This Nesk has been trailing me for two weeks. If you don't lay off, I'll get Eddie to whack him. Somehow, I don't think Eddie's gonna be much help. Seems someone told him to tail me. Where is Eddie? 
holding them. Unlike you, Al, I do my own whacking. I had a momentary flash of anger. I apologize. I didn't like it that much anyway. Well, your loyalty's touching. Now, where is our lovely Officer Hemmings? <sighs> Tied up in that bedroom. That broad has got some mouth on her. Yeah, I, I rather admire her liberated attitude. You would. I think it's time for a drink. Yeah. <clears throat> Not with you, Al. Escort the lady in. We're going out of the town. I hear your guy keeps his ear to the ground. That depends upon who you hear it from. I heard it from Bert. This is a waste of time. Sit down, Buster Brown. Don't they teach you feds any patience? How'd you know I was a fed? <laughs> Imitation leather shoes. Dead giveaway. Bert's a good man. What do you want to know? There's a new guy in town. He's been seen with Capone. Oh, yeah, you're talking about the tourist. He ain't new. But he is the guy behind Capone. Oh, come on. Logan, this chump's blowing smoke. The tourist doesn't exist. He's a myth. Tell me more about this tourist. Well, there's not much to tell, except for Capone. Nobody's ever seen his face and lived to tell the tale. He breathes into town every six months, sits on old Scarface, then disappears. Where does he hang out when he's in town? Well, I hear he has a fondness for speakeasies. How about a name? I give tips, not lectures. Pay the man. Uh, you know I had you down for a cheapskate? I guess you can't always judge a man by his shoes. I guess you can't. All right, in terms of speakeasies, I got the Waterfront, the Ritzy, the Black Cat, the TikTok Club. TikTok is in clock? Yeah, name ring a bell? Uh, let's just say old habits tie hard. You got an address? I got them all. Right here. You must have a good memory. I've developed it. Capone's guys go through my office every other day. It just kills them, I don't write anything down. Houston, we have a doppelganger. December 7th, 1926, Chicago Sentinel. Al Capone hosts Christmas party for City Orphanage. Uh, what a sweetheart. Check out the smiling mug on Al's left. Pasco. How did he get there without us knowing about it? Somehow Mr. Mistopheles has managed to incorporate himself into this time period. You're saying Pasco's supposed to be there? In a word, yes. We have no ripple. There, there is simply no other explanation. Well, we better find one. Run a full history scan. Let's see if Waldo pops up anywhere else. <laughs> I don't think they're coming out of midnight mass. Come on, let's bust this joint. This isn't about a bust. We're after something much bigger than one speakeasy. My job is to take down Capone. Now, if I have to do that one gin joint at a time, that's what I'm gonna do. And tomorrow night, another one will pop up. Start using your head. You want to take on someone like Capone, you have to start thinking like him. What kind of a crackpot philosophy is that? Capone is a crook and a killer. I'm not sinking to his level to catch him. That's the thin blue line you have to walk, Elliot. That's the job. And now you're just a hot headed kid with a gun. I sure could use a drink right now. You know, for my nerves. I've been shot at before tonight. It's okay to be scared. No one's untouchable. Not even you. They'll never let me pass that front door. Well, that's the first smart thing I've heard you say all night. <laughs> There may be hope for you yet, Ness. Uh, oh, no. Don't even ask. What? You clean me out. I want to borrow something else. Maybe I will meet him Sunday, maybe Monday, maybe not. 
but I'm sure I'll meet him one day, maybe two. Not so hard to find when you know where to look. A little home just meant for two. Are you okay? Other than the laser blaster sticking in my side, I'm fine. I've been entertaining Officer Hemmings here with tales of my adventures. He's been here before, Jack. I don't know how, but he has. It's his watch. It's more than just a temple controller, isn't it, Pasco? Well, that's what I like about you, Jack. Your potential to see the big picture. Bravo! Bravo! Why don't you fill me in on the blanks? How far back in time have you journeyed? Oh, come on, don't be shy. Tell me. A couple of hundred years. Well, you've barely walked a mile in my shoes. I've watched a Megalodon shark rip the throat out of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I've ridden with Hannibal as he crossed the Alps. Sat on the wall of Jericho as Joshua stormed the gates. Walked through the ashes of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Jack, I stood on the tip of Mount Everest just five minutes before the world ends and took in the last dying light. My watch. That's not just a passport to the future. It'll secure my place in history. <laughs> I want to secure you back in that little white cell. You're a nobody, Pasco. And you're gonna die alone and forgotten. Oh, Jack. And here I thought you were a kindred spirit. There's nothing between us, Pasco. Nothing. The watch. Hemmings first. Now. It's all yours. I always did see you going down in a hail of gunfire, Jack. my watch. Well, what are you going to do about it? Arrest you. The name of the game, Mr. Ness, is Firepower. Trust me, you're outgunned. We should destroy his watch right now. If we even scratch this thing, Pasco will kill Elliot Ness and change history forever. We have to stop playing this game on his terms. I'm open to suggestions. Pasco left me at Capone's while he went to take care of some business. He met us later at Union Station. Did he have that laser blaster with him when he left you? No. And he must have a base here. Yeah, well, he doesn't want Capone to know that. One of his men tailed Pasco. He ended up eviscerated. Did Capone get the location? I think so. Then we need to trick Big Al into talking. Yeah, well, how are we going to do that? What? I gotta say, you're the last brat I thought would come walking through that door. 
The tourists sent me. What? First he kidnaps you, now you work for him? I don't buy it. We may have started off on the wrong foot, but how long can a woman resist that kind of power? I'll bet women are attracted to you like flypaper. Your broads are all the same. You act all independent until you sink your claws into some fat cat. Well, I guess that's why they call us the weaker sex. What happened? We got rumbled at the TikTok by Elliot Ness. <sighs> Kid sticks you worse than a cheap meal. The tourist wants me to take him out. That can be arranged. I don't know what he wants. He just told me to get you and meet him. Meet him where? Didn't Eddie tell you the location? Yeah. But what's in it for me? He said if you help him out of this jam, he'll never come back to Chicago again. We'll take my car. Vito, wake up. We're going to the clock shop, the corner of Racine and Division. What's the matter with you? You got wax in your ears? Sorry, I give Vito the night off. You got a lot to learn about women, Al. Get in. <laughs> No, it can't be. Gene, better get in here pronto. We got serious trouble. What'd you find? The question is, what didn't I find? Pass goes everywhere. It's got to be some sort of computer virus. Pass goes the virus. I mean, look, there he is on the deck of the Titanic. In, in the crowd of the Hindenburg explosion at Chernobyl. On a hill at Lockerbie, Scotland. Oh, my God. This guy makes Zelig look like a shut-in. We gotta get people to every one of those dates and nail them. No, 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 we can't. It's, it's too late. Don't you see? Pasco isn't altering our history. He's created it. All these tragedies have already happened. We can't change that. The only history we can affect is the present. We have to start focusing on finding the 13-year-old Pasco. Where did Pasco get that pocket watch? Knowing him? Probably King Tut's yard sale. That's Ness's car. This must be the back of Pasco's shop. Well, I ain't ringing his doorbell. Take a hit, can you? Don't you hate it when company shows up uninvited? Oh, it's always a pleasure to see you, Jack. What about me? Where's Ness? Well, if I told you he was dead, you'd try and take me back. So why don't I just leave it if he's alive and well? And what games, Pasco? Either way, you're gonna end up back in that little white cell. Hemmings, take him back to the TC. I'll find Ness. Gladly. <laughs> No Dean pulls a gun on Al Capone and wants to tell about it. Really? Oh. Here's the first time for everything. Oh. Ow.
let's go. Oh no, Jack. It's just beginning. <laughs> Let go, Logan! Until we're standing in the TC. Can't hold on forever! Where's Pasco? Somewhere in time. Found Ness here in the trunk, bound and gagged. Well, Ness, looks like you finally get to take in Capone. For what? You two kidnapped and assaulted him. He's actually innocent for once. But I'll get him. Someday. I know you will. So you got any advice for a hot-headed kid, Logan? Yeah. You ever want to really nail Capone? Just remember uh, three little letters. IRS. Trust him. You hear this, Capone? Nobody's untouchable. Good job, Logan. You got Hemi's back in one piece. If it makes you feel any better, you're right about Pasco. He is different. No, he's not. He's nothing. And I'm gonna catch him if it takes me from here.